You're listening to Kapow, the pop culture podcast. Comics, television, movies, and more. If it impacts fan culture, we have something to say about it. And now, your hosts, Jordan, Cliff, and Seth. Streaks on the china. (laughs) (laughs) Who cares? (laughs) Guys, I've been stuck in my head for three weeks. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, welcome back to Kapow, the pop culture podcast. My name is Jordan Lowe. Cliff Barnes. I'm Seth. I, I was thinking the other day when I was editing, and that, like, we have that whole introduction, you know, very professional, and it tells you who the hosts are. And then the first thing we do every week is we tell you again in case you forgot. Yeah. And that thought had crossed my mind, but now it's in my head a little more. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we should also tell them what website to go to and wh- where to find us after they've already listened listen to it. That does, yeah, doesn't yeah, make a can, lot of sense. We can drop all that. I'm not interested. <laughs> um, or we could start by saying, give us five stars on iTunes. Yeah. Whatever. Like our Facebook page. Twitter. Etc. So, moving on. <laughs> I don't care about any of that stuff. What? What? How'd your uh, comic festival art thing go? Are you referring to the River City Comic Arts Festival? Yes. Dot com? Obviously. Uh, really well. I... Like surprisingly really well <laughs> like it could have totally exactly been yeah. terrible uh my cheery optimism these past few episodes promoting it belied a <laughs> inner turmoil worried to death about how it was going to go but it was great we had about 500 people 540 550 mm-hmm. close oh, oh maybe not quite 550 Who's counting? Um, yeah. We had... Justin Lowe. In a, he was counting. He, he was. Hash marks in the notebook. <laughs> um, opened at 10 a.m. Actually, a guy showed up about 20 after 9. And we're like, uh, they're not ready yet, so just hang on. So he sat there. At 10 a.m., there were seven people staying ready to go. I want to know more about this guy. <laughs> he was... I'm not sure how long he stuck around, but at least 40 minutes. Um... So doors open at 10. Good luck, everybody. Go. Doors are open. Everybody there's seven, in. How there's many people, seven were people walked in, and then there was no one else. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm like, I don't see anyone in the parking lot. I don't yeah. see anybody coming down the hall. Like, there was not a line to get in. And my stomach just dropped. I'm like, oh, no. And then a couple people, a couple people. And it literally, till 4.30. It was steady. It was steady. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a 10-minute stretch that somebody didn't come through. It was never a huge crush of people, but... It was amazing, and I I said, if you've gone to a comic convention, there are some where people ignore Artist Alley altogether, and there are some where people kind of, you know, interact with folks and talk to the indie artists, and that's what this was. They were, people were interested, people were buying stuff. I had a few who had traveled quite a way, said they didn't make their table back, they were the first to leave, and said, uh, we hadn't made it too many sales today so i like oh great it's not going well and then everyone after that oh man i did awesome oh i, I did better than this other big show i spent mm-hmm. tons of money to get to so the artists the ones i talked to seem really happy with it it was just it has a cool vibe all day i don't know it was it was yeah know, when i should i didn't make it till about two and uh, yeah it was popping mm-hmm. i was i was really glad to see it yeah i knew a few of the vendors and, and just talking to them that was the first thing they told me was, wow, this is going really good. <laughs> I'm making money. <laughs> I was like, great. Because, <laughs> yes, as an indie artist, that's not always a guarantee. <laughs> and I also, I internalize all that stuff. Like, you know, if a thousand people showed up and I made a bunch of money, woo, that's great. But, I like, if no one made any money, mm-hmm. I would feel bad. Yeah. Because you, you know, I go to a lot of these shows. Right. And I have literally never had one of the promoters come up to me like, hey, did you do all right today? They don't care. Mm-hmm. They've cashed your check months ago. They, you know, their job is to fill the venue, which, you know, objectively, that's true. They got the people there. Their job's done. If I make money or not, it's up to me. But I, I like to go around and ask people like, hey, was it worth your time? Did you do good? And I said the majority were hyped for it so that 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 makes me feel better mm-hmm. than the crowd size or any anything else so yeah. good the fact yep. that that this small rural town supports people who are out there trying to make their own stuff you got yeah. a thumbs up 
I did, and the <laughs> News and Sentinel, I, we, just, we got a lot of press beforehand. Like, WTAP did an interview. Both newspapers had stuff in before the event. Usually, they do it after the right. event. Yeah. So, well, the advertising was really good, and people seemed to get... There were a few people who went in looking for back issues and didn't understand it wasn't exactly a Comic-Con. Yeah, I, I think um, as I was, I was sitting out front talking to Justin, and there was one guy... That had come in just a few minutes earlier, and then he came back out, and he's like, um, are there no, like, vendors here, you know, like traditional comic book dealers? And I was like, no, it's an artist show, man. And he was like, oh, okay. But so, it's a buck, so no one should complain right. too yeah, he much. Couldn't, he couldn't say he overpaid or got ripped off or anything like that for a dollar, but... Um, so yeah. no complaints, then? Not a single complaint. <laughs> not, not a single one. <laughs> Good to hear. Uh, yeah, we was... had one minor complaint, we'll say, but <laughs> involving the costume contest yeah. and the vagaries of the costume rules. Yeah. I thought that was a great idea. And not even the guy putting on the show in Gallipolis, the Gallipolis uh, Comic and Creators Con coming up, I think, next week. Um, he said, I'm going to steal that idea. That's a good idea for the It's contest. a great idea. It's a novel idea, I believe I Radical. said. Radical. The way we. <laughs> what was that novel idea? What was it? I... Where we didn't have a costume contest, you know, specific, you know, 2 p.m. show up here, here are the categories. We just gave away prizes throughout the day. So right, yeah. I got sponsors from the area, including ourselves, Goodbye the Pop Culture Podcast, right. mm-hmm. to give away gift certificates to local businesses. And I had a few secret admirers peppered through the crowd. So when one of the judges I tapped, Saw somebody they liked, they flagged me down and said, oh, that's a really cool costume. Make sure they get something. So just, you know, once an hour or so, stop somebody in the middle of the floor. Like, hey, you want a prize. Here you go. So if you didn't get something, you that's okay. All right. It's like, yeah. If I had been there and been dressed up and, like, I probably would have, like, waited and waited forever. (laughs) Right. And then complained. And then, yeah. Because you weren't paraded around and lauded for your... Great costume you bought. I understand. Yeah, well, that's exactly yeah, there, what I there mean. There are shows that. that are built around cosplay. And yeah. They give away thousands of And there are shows prizes. that are built around being able to buy back issues. <laughs> right. <laughs> this was not that show. There is room for all shows. <laughs> right. So if you came out and enjoyed yourself, thank you very much. I, I think we're going to stick with this format because there I, are I, lots of shows in the region yeah. you can drive to within an hour or so. And we like doing something a little different. So. I, I think it was a huge success what I saw. I was I was pleased to see that you could take that idea of making it about local artists and creators, and it was successful. That was great. There was so. plenty of room to walk around. You weren't tripping over anybody. You, it was nice and cool inside the venue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we were setting up that morning, uh, we got in there to the hotel like the night before we had leisurely time to put the tables up because normally there's a wedding or something there the night before we're there till 4 a.m this was nice and leisurely and i thought you know i normally bring a change of clothes because <laughs> i get there that morning at 4 a.m mm-hmm. and set things up or whatever so i'm like i'm just going in i don't have anything left to set up yeah i'm not gonna sweat through my shirt what <laughs> come on so this, with, this yeah. ain't the junior yeah. fair building come on <laughs> So within an hour, I had already regretted that. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was a little toasty that morning. People are loading in and hauling stuff. So I asked the lady at the hotel. I said, "Could we get that turned down anymore?" And she she, she came later and said, "All right, it's turned down as low as we're allowed to turn it." <laughs> or if what? It, if, if it gets any cooler, it, the whole system might freeze up. Okay. So I'm like, "All right, I'm willing to take that chance. Crank that sucker." <laughs> up. Uh, yep, awesome. So, oh, we haven't done uh, a uh, get to know us for a while. Let's yeah, do it's one been a while. You down with KPP? Yeah, you know me. What the hell is wrong with you people? You know me. What's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? You know me. I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. Why are you the way that you are? Yeah, you know me. Uh, yeah, 
we're ever light on content, we have to do this segment because that fills up a lot of air time. Yeah, that drop put. So that's like five minutes. So. Yeah. So what's that's the question? We have a pile of questions here. Are we going with what we said or are you sure. pick something else? <laughs> this is where we randomly pick a getting to know you question and we give you the answers as off the cuff as we can give. So Seth picked this time. What was your final uh, answer? I, uh, the one I pulled out was, uh, what was it? What was the first album you bought? Yeah. Ooh. We don't talk music too Ever. much. <laughs> Unless it's the theme song. TV theme song. (laughs) Oh, Oh, my uh, first tape (laughs) I remember buying with my own money was Sting, The Dream of the Blue Turtles. No. Okay. (laughs) I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I just remember buying it. Yeah. It was uh, it was very in the eighties, in the mid eighties. There. Big. Was there? There was some sort of music store out there by. Kroger's wasn't there. There was some. Was there a sound exchange or something out there? Because mm. I feel like I bought something in the cl- in the Kroger Plaza. Yeah, out there uh. by TCBY was out there at one point. Oh my gosh, that's a long time ago. People. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I feel like there was some music store out there that I bought it at. But hmm. whatever, Sting. I still, I still, I still have a few of uh, his albums. I like. I always like the Police, and yeah, I just I like his voice. I like some of his music and. I still listen to that every once in a while. It's got a few things on there. I think the release from was a Fortress Around Your Heart or something. I'm, I'm sure that's the yeah. right title. But the whole thing's good. <laughs> yeah. I uh, when, when I was a little kid, my dad had this one of those like 1970s stereo systems that was all, it was like a cabinet, had oh, built-in yeah. speakers, yeah. lift up top, had yeah. a record player, oh, yeah, an yeah. eight track cassette yeah. in there, even had a little place where it had a microphone and you could plug a microphone in and record, <clears throat> much like our, you know, setup today, like we're using right now. But the earliest, the earliest uh, album, <laughs> <No. laughs> it didn't have as many wires, yeah. but you, you get the gist. Um, but the earliest one I remember is, uh, was the, during the original Ghostbusters craze. Yeah. And I had the, uh, the record of the Ghostbusters soundtrack. Oh yeah. And I wore that thing out. And in fact. You bought this. You went and bought this. Well, I couldn't tell you. I was. Oh yeah. This, we're talking 1985. Okay. But it's the first one I remember that was mine. I think the Sting was 19. <laughs> Yep, 1985. Let's see, you gotta have something from 1985. What'd you buy from 1985? Mine's more like 1995. I was, I was not like a musical fan. My brother Justin, he was a rock and roller. He had every album, posters on the wall, like. He had the haircut to go with it. Oh yeah, he had the mullet. Oh, I was, uh, full disclosure, don't let the Sting stuff throw you. I was full hairband guy, still am. (laughs) So, like, yeah, he had all the albums and stuff, so I never thought I had to buy a record or anything. But I actually, you said soundtrack. The first one may have been me pressuring some relative to take me to Pizza Hut so I could get the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh. <laughs> like, tie the coming out of their shells tour, like, tie in <laughs> album and video. That could have been it. That's a big surprise. But I. Re- <laughs> <laughs> We're really getting to know you. <laughs> Yeah, I, we had records. We had 45s. We yeah. had, but it was all hand me downs and stuff. Or yeah. my parents had, you know, the rocking fifties, like one of those big cassettes with like you know twenty cassettes in a yeah. in a binder kind of thing. Like so we were listening to Bird is the Word and all that stuff. <laughs> but the first the first album I remember being my own was when I got a CD player for the first time, fifteenth birthday, sixteenth birthday. After everyone I knew, I'm sure. But I got a little portable disc man, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. off brand, some sort of yeah, disc, yeah. you know, CD player. You had the disc person, <laughs> disc dude, or something. <laughs> but uh, and it came with two albums. Uh, the one being Chuck Berry's greatest hits, and the other, the Spin Doctors, Pocket Full of Krypton. Oh, oh my god, I had gosh. that. I had that. I still love the Spin Doctors. Yeah. I oh my gosh, that I, is I love that that's album. revealing. I love that's that album. Revealing. <laughs> I had that as well. Oh, that's. <laughs> Now I, I remember for one Christmas I asked I I can't remember all three but I I asked for three tapes one Christmas and, and I know two of them one was Led Zeppelin House of the Holy and Dawkin Back for the Attack and I got them 
<laughs> and then the next Christmas, I got a disc player, and I was like, I want those same three things on CD. <laughs> like so. Yeah, the first one I really remember. I think that I bought. I had the Fat Boys, whatever album they had around the time they made that. I wonder who bought that movie stuff. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> But I had that. But yeah, the first Bad one I boys, the first one I remember was uh, was definitely Ghostbusters. I remember because my mom we had, had our my dad's stereo system that honestly he just got rid of a few years ago. <clears throat> but um, anyways, uh, she had a eight track recording of me from when I was like I don't know five years old back then, and it was me playing the Ghostbusters theme from that record and singing into that microphone <laughs> so i don't know whatever happened to that thing but uh but it, it's out there somewhere we need that on the podcast <laughs> oh yeah that's enough Bill's- about us <laughs> <laughs> you, you're real two princes going on over here <laughs> actually somebody got me as a joke for christmas a couple years ago it was like a spin doctor's live album Oh. I was like, I found it like a dollar store, and I put it on. I'm like, yeah, oh, uh. they're terrible lot. <laughs> they're like a you know hippie you know yeah. jam band kind of thing. But pocket full of kryptonite's where it's at. <laughs> well, it's in the pocket. Okay, all right, we did it. Let's do. Let's talk about some stuff we've been watching here on uh, TV. Oh, the Lord. What the hell is a sticky maple? Run, fairy, run. That's what I do. I drink and I know things. Go get him, Supergirl. Well, what this guy look like, anyway? Oh, he's a little guy, kind of funny looking. Ha uh-huh. ha. In what way? Oh, just in a general kind of way. Exterminate! Little pig, little pig! Let me in! These violent delights have violent ends. That's what she said. Groovy. I know it's summer, but I just want to let everybody know I follow all the actors and cast of Riverdale. Well, yeah, and they're right. currently filming season four, right. and I am getting pumped up. He's getting pumped up, guys. <laughs> they have cast a new actor and some sort of Jughead's new advers- adversary. Uh, some from a uh, adversary, <laughs> <laughs> and from uh, some kind of preppy preppy academy. So I, I'm oh, pumped man. up. Can't wait. Okay, oh, preppies. Yeah, I'm uh I'll be ready by then. Well I watched uh I sent you guys a couple of screenshots last night. I speaking of Riverdale, we went I went back to the old Riverdale. They had a nine oh two one oh reunion show that was not <laughs> what I thought it was gonna be. I just reading the description from my T V mm-hmm. where it said like the cast of nine oh two one oh gets back together and I was like, Wait, what? This isn't what I thought okay, it was. Okay, I'm going to describe so it. It's, it's like, it's, like pic- it's meta that way. Picture <laughs> Saved by the Bell, Vegas. Like they go to Vegas. Mm-hmm. Only all the people are playing themselves. But it's it's a version of themselves. Like Right. It's they're all their all their <laughs> it was so weird. <laughs> it was it's weird. like either do it or don't. Like I don't it, They're playing I guess who people think they are. Yeah, but it's weird because like they have other actors portraying their spouses, spouses or partners uh, or whatever. Okay, but they're not their real life spouses. Like uh, Gabrielle Carteris is that her name? Who is who? Sh- she is the well. She's the lead. She played. Um, I don't even know what her name was on the show. She was the Andrea. One of, yeah, she was one of way older than everybody else. She yeah. had the hots for Brandon, and she is the leader. I mean, the, the president of the Screen Actors Guild, right? and that's who and she that, is in the show. And, well, it's not the Screen Actors Guild. It's some fake thing. But but she's playing that. And she's having... Tr- There's some director that's been giving people trouble. Guess what? It's, it's Jason Priest. <laughs> I was like, this is so strange. It, it was very strange. And of course, Brian Austin Green, I used to... Well, I was, I'll say I used to listen to his podcast. He has a podcast called With Brian Austin Green. He's been doing for, I don't know, a couple years or so now that I used to listen to every week when I had a lot more time. And, of course, he's married to um, Transformers Yep, girl. Jennifer something. Is that it? No. <laughs> Jennifer's body. 
Yes, that's who it is. <laughs> You're correct. Okay, go on. He's buried in Jennifer's body. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> that's why I said that. Right. And in this in this episode, he's married to a famous actress, he or a girl that portrays a famous actress, and they have a bunch of girls and kids, just like he does in real life. But it's a different woman, and I was like, "What is going on right now?" Yeah, who's who, I don't remember which one. One of uh, Nick Lakey's wife was on there playing one of their wives. It might, okay. have, been, might have been his wife. Whatever. It was cr- <laughs> it was so weird that I that had to watch it. That kind of stuff can be fun yeah. when they don't take themselves too seriously. And well, they definitely of... did not take themselves seriously. No. But for some of it. That's just it, though. Some of it they did, so it was weird. And Tori Spelling was just over-the-top dumb. Well, like the way she yeah. was acting. Yeah. Going, she like there was a dr- they what they they were at, went to Vegas for a uh, convention. Yeah, for uh, a, a nine hundred two one zero convention. Right. So all their fans are there. Meanwhile, Kelly's trying to get laid because her marriages have failed. Like I assume, yeah. I assume in real life her marriages have failed. I, I so guess. she's like joking on herself. I don't know. It was crazy. And then they tried to be sentimental about Luke Perry. So when yeah. they did that, it went it was, over like a ton of bricks. <laughs> it was it was weird as it, heck. Yeah, and of course they I, I was expecting um Brenda yeah. uh I Brenda see. character to be a bigger part of the show and they just all were she I, they put her up on a screen for a, a few minutes. And I think the next episode you're gonna she's you're gonna, gonna get a bunch more bunch of her or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, it was so there was very nobody strange. like noticeably absent. Like all the main characters, it like, was the original characters. It wasn't the later season. It didn't have Tiffany like Tiffany Amethyst. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I mean they were they were all there. Except, but it was strange. I, I I'm definitely gonna watch another episode just because I have to see if this nonsense continues <laughs> or what. Well, happening. that's you know what 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 was strange about it was yeah the all the silliness and then like you said Brian Austin Green is like got serious stuff going on. I'm like yeah. I will say this, and we made fun of Ian Ziering back in the day for looking like he was. 40 compared to these kids. He looks he exactly looks, He still looks 40 and they all look 80. Like, he looks exactly the same. He held up the best. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. But, you know, how many of these reboots and redos are just pointless? Like, what are they even doing? So, you know, rather than coming back as middle-aged people, like, having the same kind of drama, like, yeah, take a chance, try something different. Yeah. I, I think they could have went more Riverdale-ish. Like, I think that's what would have been they kind of leaned that way, but yeah. they could have went all in and just like they did say sapphic. Yeah, <laughs> they said that was yeah. in the dialogue. So, yeah, that was it was a it was an experience. I'll say that. <clears throat> um, I was gonna mention Big Brother real quick. I know it's probably obsolete by the time you're here, <laughs> but I predicted Tommy as the winner, and now uh, he he is now the head of household of the current week. As we record, and this is his make or break week. I don't know whether he's going. Things have kind of fallen in on him a little bit, but he's still trying to hold it together, and still I think has a good chance of winning. Although I don't want him to. I'm still voting for Cliff, the Hog Father. <laughs> okay. Uh, you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Not That's what it makes it really hard to talk about. Is it? It's it's easily knows. It he started it. out. It started out kind of. You didn't like anybody, so the the show has picked up and it, it's turning into a decent season so i'm enjoying it um what else? oh i watched that i had free epics or whatever a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. I watched the first episode of pennyworth which is something i never would have watched dc sent me a giant poster for that Ooh, <laughs> not like even the 24 by 36 like 48 by uh, 36 by 48 or something. It folded like 18 times. Right. It's like, what is this? Wallpaper like, your shop. Anywhere. So I'm like, oh, I forgot this. <laughs> yeah. We should give that thing away. Put that in the back room. <laughs> we could sign it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I just think all the people that want that. <laughs> Everybody needs a giant Pennyworth poster. Anyway, I won't watch any more of it, but, but it wasn't bad. So, was there a reason it even existed? Oh, was was, no, was no. it different in any way than Gotham or any of this other stuff? I didn't watch Gotham, 
So I don't know. It's just like a, <laughs> it's just what you think, kind of think it would be him back when he was young and showing how he w- was doing cool spy stuff. It's very learning, uh, learning how to dust furniture. It's very Agent mm-hmm. Carter. Oh, okay. you know what I mean. But it's you know a little more serious, I guess. I don't know. But his parents are, you know, Maiden Butler, and but it shows it kind of portrays them. They're not just that. They're you know they. Can be cool too. <laughs> Streaks on the china. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, see, I wish I would have watched Mr. Belvedere instead. Yeah, I want to watch some Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> yeah, forget Penny, Pennyworth. Pennyworth. Yeah. Watch, you watch Belvedere. Belvedere. Watch Belvedere. <laughs> A prequel origin story. Yeah. <laughs> um, spe- <laughs> I'm trying to transition. <laughs> Speaking of Agent Carter. She's going to be on uh, the final season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, they just finished up their latest season. Okay. I have all of them saved on my DVR, and I will get to oh, them at some point. So can't I, wait to hear that report. I'm looking forward. I'm going to I already it. got tricked into watching an episode <laughs> last year. I'm not falling for that again. Never Agent again. Carter, you, you got to watch that. I was never a fan. You didn't like Agent I really enjoyed Agent, Agent Carter. Uh, that was a good show. Um, I wa- I won't say I watched. My wife has been watching, and I have been watching also a show called Younger on TV Land with question mark. Um, sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's a younger. How is it that the older and more experienced you are, the less desirable you become? You are way too young for me. Whoa, twenty six, dude. I mean, we're gonna be the same age, give or take. I thought I was in my 20s. What? Yes. What do they put in the drinks in that place, and how do we get it into the water supply? People believe what you tell them. They believe the real housewives are real. They think that coconut wood is going to shrink their ass. No one wants to hire a 40-year-old has-been. Tell them you're 26. I'm going to need some highlights. What would you say makes you special? I'm a grown-up. I don't think I'm special. I'm Kelsey Peters. I'm an editor here, and basically I was you two years ago. If you say so. Are you two still busy braiding friendship bracelets, or are you ready to come back to work? She lies about her age. How pathetic is that? <laughs> it's totes pathetic. Hashtag pathetic. <laughs> um, so far, we, we've we just started season four. On TV land. It's on TV land. We've been watching it through Hulu. And... This is quite a route. This is, yeah, this, go to get this is my wife's new show, okay? Okay. So, I've watched completely one through three it's pretty good it's a darren star show um i looked it up based on a 2005 novel by pamela redmond satran question mark um (laughs) but it's an older show it premiered in like 2015 uh it's been on a long time i would i watched the teachers on that network Okay. Sitcom about young teachers and the ridiculous stuff they have to go through, and it was on like right after it. And they 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 uh, previewed the crap out of the show. This was okay. This was the show. At TV Land was like, yeah. TV Land is young and hip. Come what watch it. What is it about? It's about. It stars Sutton Foster. No, what's mark. it about? Um, <laughs> it's about a forty-year-old divorce a who has to go back into, uh, after a divorce, she has to go find a new life. She has to get a job in the big city. And um, the only way she can do that is to pretend she's a 26-year-old, um, ah. not far out of college, who's young, hip, millennial, and she's working in book publishing with all these um, young, hip people. It also has, um, the biggest name in it was... Um, this is uh, like when Chandler got into advertising. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but the biggest names in it were Hillary Duff and Debbie... A real one will know. Debbie <laughs> Debbie Mazar. <laughs> I, I knew her face, but I, I, didn't, I, I never knew her name. Um, Miriam Shore and Nico Tortella co-star in the first few seasons. But yeah, she has to pretend she's younger... Um, and hip and get these big book deals done and and of course um, being you know newly single she runs with the, her lie of a life and starts dating a young ah, okay. uh, a young tattoo shop owner and it's a whole thing, whole thing. it's a whole thing 
It's good. It's funny. No, it was pretty good. My wife really likes it. I I've enjoyed most of the episodes. I will say this: um, TV Land is pretty raunchy. Yeah, yeah, that teacher show is a little bit. I, it blew me. Nerdy. Like I was like, oh, <laughs> that is raunchy. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Younger. Okay, you want to talk TV here? I'm coming around. Best show on television Yellowstone. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing we do is for today. Ranching is only business where the goal is to break even. Survive another season. Did you watch this week? That Jordan? was a heck of an episode. <laughs> uh, Nick was sitting there, and I'm watching it. I was like, Nick, you're not gonna believe this show. Like, like I started it. He's like, Ah, cowboys. I was like, I was like, Yeah. I was like, Cowboys and craziness. Like, it's just, it's just got the western feel and the crazy stuff going. On. And it was like not very far in it. Uh, she tells she tells Jamie, is that the that's the yeah. West Bentley is losing his mind. She's like, This comes from a place of love. You should really kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's like, Oh my gosh. I was like, I know. She said he had celiac. She lied to her he had celiac disease a couple episodes ago. All I know is you can't fix a broken wagon wheel. <laughs> but you can use the parts to make a new one, Jordan. All men are bad. But some of us try real hard to be good. What is this on? <laughs> Paramount Network. Used oh. to be, uh, some, I don't know, Family Channel or something like that. But it used to be Spike, I think. Paramount? Okay, what's the one? There was a Freeform ABC. Was oh, family, free, yeah. Freeform, Freeform was, was, yeah, was family. This is not a Freeform show. No. <laughs> anyway, my, my problem with the show this crazy. season has been... Taylor Sheridan, the creator, has this other show on about rodeo, like a right. reality show. The Last show. Cow Boy. And it's on right after, and they've been promoting, hey, if you like Yellowstone, watch this other show about actual rodeo people. And so the, there's been 17 subplots this year about rodeo and learning to ride. And it's like, it seems like the show has become an ad for this other show. It's like, I'm not watching your other show, Paramount. Stop it. <laughs> but this, the end of this last episode, like cranked it up and it was awesome so, I don't remember what happened what was it? Uh, her face off with the, the goons oh yeah came to kill her yeah she was, rip, I was like, that's what Nick was, I was like Nick trust me she's not gonna take this <laughs> <laughs> I was like see how she smashed that guy's head after he's already dead I think she smashed his head with it a million times it's like she, she <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so insane that's what every every show needs a little bit of Yellowstone in it now <laughs> Okay. And the fourth and final season of Preacher just premiered on AMC. Speaking of a show that just throws everything at the wall. So they got four seasons to, you know, people were worried when it premiered whether how, you know, how long it was going to last, if it was going to be, mm-hmm. you know, picketed or canceled early. But they're having a chance to tell the full story. They've shuffled things around from the comics. You know, something that happened in the first dozen issues is happening now here in the fourth season. So I don't know. I'm. I'm enjoying it enough to keep watching, but it's it's it has some flaws in the storytelling, and I said things just happen even weirder than Yellowstone. They're like it's preacher, everything's wacky and crazy and yeah, that's, unpredictable. That's why I quit watching because it felt like there was a lot of some stuff just happened just to be shocking. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, very much a lot of that. But it's almost over. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best thing I can say about it is it's almost over. <laughs> All right. Was there anything else on the the boob tube, or are we going to move on here? We're moving on. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams. Violence in the streams. That is what we are. Cross the streams. So. <laughs> well. Who wants to start? You want to start with the boys? That's that was kind of the bit a big one. Topical. Everyone's talking about this show. Yeah. Okay. Have you watched it? I have not. People love superheroes. They swoop out of the sky and save the day. People love that cozy feeling. That superheroes give them. 
Well, we we watched it. I'm happy you did because I'd like to hear about it. <laughs> yeah. I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. Robin! My deepest condolences to Robin's family. She just stepped in the middle of the street. You know, I, I couldn't. She was a half step off the f- curb. Now, come on, Huey, just uh, don't get upset. Soups lose hundreds of people each year to collateral damage. F***ing diabolical. They're all like that? All of them. Yeah. Pardon my friend. Fuck those f***ers. I've got the boys together. No. Jonas. Yeah. So do what? Spank the bastards. Yes. We're Robin. And then... Lacing the shoes, I'm on the move. I got so much to prove. I, I was surprised, like, I think you're getting at, like, when they announced it, and it can't coming out, and then all of a sudden, there was nothing but positive reviews. I was like, what is happening? And mm-hmm. a show similar, like, to Preacher, where I thought, how do you make this a show? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, on the printed page, it's like, go all, you know, go out as far as you can go, as hard R as you can go, as raunchy as you can go, it's like, what push are gonna put, every boundary. Gonna put this on TV, like It's like, I... <laughs> <laughs> this is not a TV land show. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I read the book. I didn't love it. It always had something interesting to say about superheroes. So the fact that the show works doesn't surprise me, really, especially as inundated as culture is right now with superhero stuff. Having something new to say about superheroes is probably an important thing. So yeah, tell me why I need to watch this. Well, I did not read these books, and in fact, as I was watching the show, I thought I'm pretty sure Michael has read these books. I've I, I've read at least the first arc, maybe a couple arcs, okay. I, and I think I had borrowed them from him years ago. And I liked, you know, it was shocking and stuff, you know. So I, I liked the idea of like corrupt superheroes, you know, and just seeing behind the scenes, you mm-hmm. know, what what's going on, but. Uh, so what we have, at least in the show, is it's basically the Justice League. Oh, yeah, they're very thin. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. yeah, all the way. But they're they're like nasty Justice League. Yeah, yeah. But in public, they're beloved figures, right. right? It's just right. They're not like evil. It's not the Injustice League, but they're just flawed, <clears throat> terrible humans, right? Yeah, just horrible people. Yeah. Um, owned by a corporation. And yeah. and run by Elizabeth Shue. Yeah, and she's very good. I yeah. I liked her. Um. They were all good in it. Carl Urban was great. Yeah. Butcher. And that guy, uh, Anthony Starr, that plays Homelander, was great. Yeah. Yeah. He did a really good... They were... Again, though, it's not... I, I've heard people saying he stood out, but I think they're all really good. The girl, Aaron Moriarty, mm-hmm. a Starlight, and... Who was the guy that played Huey? Like, I... Uh, I that's, liked him. D- that's That is Meg Ryan and Dennis Quaid's son. Really? Yeah. Oh. Jack Quaid. Okay. Uh, I, and I was like, hey, as soon as I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, I could see yeah. both of them in him. And the guy that played Jesse T. Usher, A Train, mm-hmm. he was great. The I'm looking, I like that, uh, the deep. Yeah. He was yeah. just exactly what he should be. Mm-hmm. Like he, that, he's, he's the, um, the water hero yeah, or whatever. The Aquaman. Yeah, he's the Aquaman and he's just like, oh, oh. You know, great. I get. Oh, I'm getting sent on another water mission. You know, and he just. But he's just looks the part. Does I mean they all do a really good job. It's well made. Yeah, it's very well made. And I'm not. I I think this is probably the first thing I've ever watched on the first series I've ever watched on Amazon Prime that I was like, this is really good. I I'm I watched it in two days. I really enjoyed it. Um, Couldn't wait to see what was going to happen next because I hadn't read the books. Yeah, just saw the headline today that it's it's like one of the most watched shows in two weeks. Yeah. It's already surpassed numbers from some of the other yeah, shows. Yeah, it's maybe. Amazon's most binged show yeah. so far. I will say they did no not... Racer, go. For, yeah, for you having not read the books, I'll say they, as much as they did shocking things, they didn't go as far as the comics. Mm-hmm. Like, they, it's much... I think they went as... I think they went far enough to get the point across yeah they so, yeah i i agree with that they didn't need to go as far i don't think the boys comic needed to go as far as it yeah did. i don't need to revel in misery and right. debauchery and stuff like yeah. you know that that is that is a criticism i have of that comic is that mm-hmm. it's too much and this 
I think they fixed that with mm. this. Again, I thought uh, the biggest thing this has going for it is the cast. Yeah. They were all really good. All really good. Um, yeah, so just a, you know, a real, without getting spoilery, because it's pretty new, um, there's a, a Huey is just a regular guy who finds himself, um, there's an accident with someone close to him and uh, caused by one of these heroes. And, um, you know, it's very, of course, the lawyers show up and they're like, well, here's $45,000. Just sign this off and shut your mouth. <laughs> and he's like, no, I don't care about your money. You know, I, I, I want something done about this. And now, that, I don't know if you did the, the, when the comic was drawn and the, that character was drawn to look like Simon Pegg. So, See, I'd heard, so, I've Simon read something Pe- about and that. And in the show, Simon he, Pegg plays his father. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah, so that kind of sparks it, and then he meets this Billy Butcher character who we don't know why, but he's out to get, you know, what, what's the group? The Seven. They're called, mm-hmm. instead of the Justice League, they're just called the Seven. And uh, he wants to take them down. So the story basically is we it's them trying attempting to take down this big corporate hero faction that has endless funds and endless fans everybody thinks they're great <coughs> and uh, how they're going to do yeah, that I'm sure there's a lot to say about you know, Hollywood covering things up politics yeah the way people act behind the scenes and the me too movement and yeah. superhero worship and celebrity and money and power like yeah, there's a there's a nice stew of things to talk yeah. about in the superhero genre. Yeah, yeah. I wish you you you, sh- you sh- need to watch that. And <laughs> watch that, Jordan. I think you would like. It. And I guess they're doing season two. I I, I have to imagine how. Yeah. Yeah, how could they pass it's got it up? a nine ninety percent or something? It's very well. Liked. I will. Say, I'm not going to go overboard. I want like at as usual with these series. That they dump all at once, and I just sit there and watch. Mm-hmm. Usually, by three quarters of the way through, I'm like, yada yada, <laughs> let's go. I always feel like it's everything they write. They have a couple episodes too long <laughs> yeah. to tell that story, but at least it was only eight instead of thirteen or whatever. Yeah, episodes it was, like it, Netflix does. So. It wasn't hard to get through, and um, it was funny when I was first. First watching it, the one of the heroes is called the Black Noir, <laughs> but he looks like Snake Eyes yeah. in like GI Joe season one. I was hey, like, hey, talk, Snake Eyes, yeah, he doesn't talk, talk or anything. dressed like Snake Eyes. It was <laughs> so. he plays the hell of a piano. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now I just like saying that like that total, uh, you know, no explanation. <laughs> All right. Anyway, it was good. Yeah. So watch the boys on Amazon Prime, Jordan. Well, no wait. Guess. Speaking of boys, if you want to watch another team, Queer Eye season four came out on Netflix <laughs> a couple weeks ago. And again, if you need a good cry, great show. I recommend it to everyone. These guys, uh, again, they show up and just be- these people are so they don't want them to leave. They're just like these are my new best friends in the world. <laughs> they love them. This one guy was so he said a hundred times how he never would have guessed that when he was told five gay guys were going to come to his house that he would be end up being cool with it you know he was just mm-hmm. they don't really do that a lot they don't go somewhere that they're like not going to be accepted somewhat you know and this guy was told you know turned around by them and stuff so it's it's a really good show okay go on uh, I canceled my Netflix. So. Oh wow! This might that might be my last. Uh, this might be my last uh, foray. Mm. <laughs> Helping you out with the stream. Hey, that we are at that point. That's worth noting. That we a couple years ago nobody would even fathom you canceling Netflix. Because what they announced this week, the bundle deal, which yes. we had had been rumored, mm-hmm. but we have a confirmation. Yes, twelve ninety nine will get you Hulu, the regular Hulu plan. Um, Disney Plus and ESPN Plus. So is that live sports or is it just? I don't it's, know. I don't know what's on. It's ESPN. All something you'll never watch. But you get Hulu. <laughs> Someone will watch. It. You will get Hulu and Disney Plus. That's the that's the real thing. And Hulu has the current sitcoms and shows. Yeah, it's like a day later. Yeah, a day later or whatever. Just like okay. it always was. Now myself, I already have Hulu, but I actually have Hulu Live 
So we stream mm-hmm. live television and we have the regular Hulu stuff and they have some Hulu originals and series and stuff like that. So too. yeah, so people are going to, you know, you're when we everybody <laughs> wanted to become cord cutters and be able to pick what they wanted to watch and, that, and then ended up having 27 different streaming platforms. Yeah. Now they're saying, "Well, okay, what do I have to cut?" Nobody, you know, people wouldn't have said, "I'm going to cut Netflix." But it's Yeah, happening. I just I looked at it and cuz I got Netflix free for a year mm-hmm. signing up for the cable plan I got. And then I just was paying for it for a few months. And I was like, well, I'll stick around and watch this series. It's like, oh, well, Stranger Things coming out. I'll yeah. at least keep it through July. And then August, like, oh, Glow Season 3 is about to come out. I was like, I, I have to stop somewhere. Yeah. They'll just keep dragging they know you what along. They're doing. Yeah, there's always going to be something I want to I got a full M. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Fuller House, the final season, or whatever. <laughs> but uh, oh, I've said too much. No, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, when I was getting it free... You know, a week would go by. I'd never even turn it on, and it's like, mm-hmm. oh, they're billing me crap. I better start. I better get my money's worth. So I was watching a ton of stuff. I got through the entire run of Monty Python, all four seasons of that. <laughs> there were a bunch of those I hadn't seen. That's one of my favorite shows of all time, and just I, you know, they weren't rerunning every episode back then. So love Monty Python. Watched the uh, rewatched all the episodes of New Girl, mm-hmm. the sitcom from Fox. Yeah. I uh, got to finish the third season of Ash vs. Evil Dead, which I'd only seen the first two, so I got to finish that one up. Watched Kimmy Schmidt, liked that a lot. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good one. I never one. watched yeah, it, but... No. no, my daughter loved that show. Yeah, it's very... Uh, yes, Tina Fey, uh, Robert Carlock, I think the name of the 30 Rock creator, so yeah. it has a very 30 Rock vibe. It's very silly. Yeah. Uh, the jokes are absurd, but... Uh, <clears throat> oh, it's, it's, worth it just to, or it's worth it just to watch Titus. Oh, Titus is very good. The first season, he was a little bit like, you know, just kind of a gay stereotype, best mm-hmm. friend thing. But they gave him more depth and more stuff to do. Yeah. But so, yeah, some of my biggest laughs on there. One that I, the only thing I know about the show is it had a great idea for a theme song. And it may be on the bracket. <laughs> <laughs> that is the only show on Netflix I've never skipped the theme song too. I always yeah. listen to. You the know, theme song. Uh, I'm sure you know what they're what it is a reference to. Oh yes, yeah. Yes. I love that. Yeah. I love yeah. that. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we'll discuss stuff. that later. <laughs> <laughs> later tonight, I uh, got through all the new Mystery Science Theater 3000 episodes. Man, you've been watching a lot. This is like over the last year. Oh, okay. This, is, this wasn't just <laughs> oh, like this holy is cow. How freaking Scrooge McDuck would watch Netflix. <laughs> it's like okay, I'm canceling it. I gotta watch every <laughs> single thing on it. Uh, I squeeze every drip <laughs> out of the orange. I uh, got through all the Marvel shows. So, I, did we ever even talk about like no. Punisher season two or Jessica Jones season no. three? I don't it's know. old news now, but yeah. too long. Yeah. Uh, I, and if you guys remember, y'all, I always got made fun of being, being being so far behind on the Marvel shows. Yeah, but my tortoise slow and steady wins the race plan <laughs> i finished punisher season two the weekend jessica jones came out mm-hmm. so there was never a time i was waiting on a marvel show uh, so take that so put your megaphones away yeah. quit standing outside his house heckling him uh i liked i liked all the marvel shows like they're all, mm-hmm. they're all fun they're, they're all, all good. fine did you say fine fine good enough <laughs> uh Probably will never have anything else. We'll never tie into. Yeah. I don't yeah. see Disney Plus rebooting no. them. I don't see. I think they're just they're done. done. They're it's done. a point in history, and yeah. they're done. So enjoy them for what they are. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, I also caught a documentary. One of the last things I watched on there called Jack of All Trades. Oh, I saw this um, listed. It keeps popping up on my feed, but I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I was surprised. I didn't know what it was. It was listed as 2018, but I think it's pretty new to mm-hmm. Netflix. My generation was the last to grow up without the internet. We didn't have smartphones, laptops, or reality TV. We had baseball cards. In the late 80s, early 90s, there were something like 10,000 baseball card shops in the United States. My dad, Jack, had opened a baseball card store called Sluggers, and by 1990, there were 11 locations. Your father was like the king of the spot. Everybody went to Jack. I remember stories of my dad going through his stuff and finding, like, million-dollar treasures. Maybe that will happen to me. What do I bring up every time you come in? These boxes. I'm just excited to crack them open and see what's in there. They're in mint condition. Probably worth a fortune. It almost seemed like overnight the industry happened. We went from three million a year to almost 150 million a year 
for seven straight years. The 89 Upper Deck King Griffey Jr. rookie card. It changed the game. It just sparked a frenzy. So it's like printing $20 bills, $50 bills, $100 bills. It was a $400 case cost. And as soon as somebody got it, it was worth $1,000. People were going to Price Club and Costco, buying everything off the rack and putting it in the garage. If I hold on to this thing for 30 years, nobody's going to have one. It's going to be the only one. And, and, and that The logo looked like a, the Topps baseball yeah, card logo. That's what attracted me. Yeah. I'm like, well, what is this about? So <laughs> it, it is that's a... That's what attracted. <laughs> yeah. Baseball cards are an interesting subject to me. Um, I read a book a couple years ago called Mint Condition, How Baseball Cards Became an American Obsession by a journalist named Dave Jameson. It was fascinating. He traced, you know, the tobacco cards of Mm the 1800s up through, you know, the boom in the 90s and the bust. And it was, it was really interesting tracing pop culture through these cards. Yeah. And it was, I, because I collected cards right in that that era. Yeah, Yeah, me too. And it blew up. So... Seeing this, I'm like, oh, it's a documentary about baseball cards. I thought it'd be a similar thing. And they actually talked to that same journalist on there. They interview him. But it is Stuart Stone, who he was a child actor. His biggest role was Donnie Darko. He was one of Donnie's classmates in Donnie Darko. And he's had a couple like TV roles and small movie roles. Mostly a voice actor. He was he was in uh, the Magic School Bus, Babar. <laughs> 15 episodes of the X-Men cartoon. He mm-hmm. played uh, Proteus, Mario McTaggart's mutant son, or anytime there was a flashback to young Xavier. So he... Long storied career. But his father, Jack, where we get the title, Jack mm-hmm. of all trades. Because the title... Made, the, I couldn't yeah. connect I'm the follow, title. I was waiting. I was trying yeah. to figure it out. Yeah. So his dad, Jack Stone, owned Sluggers, which is one of the first chains mm-hmm. in Canada of card shops. Hmm. So he, when this blew up and there was a boom time, he opened. He had a whole chain of stores. At some point, <coughs> excuse me, he closed the store or sold the stores, left his family and disappeared, and was not part of his kid's life anymore. So the documentary is about the mom calling up the kid and saying, "Like, there's still 15 boxes of cards in this spare room. You've got to get these out of here." So, my main criticism is, I don't want to say it's, like, faked, but there seem right. to be some moments they may be, like, reshot or, like, because mm. nobody's that great of an actor in this. So, <laughs> the kid, they take all these cards, and he's going through them, and he's calling his sister, and he's like, oh, yeah, they're all in here. I got, oh, yeah, I got, I got both matting leaves. They're both in there. And, like, he's super hyped. I was like, have you not paid any attention to the last 30 years? Right. Like, these are yeah, nothing. These are so not he and his anything. sister were going to go to this card show and sell all these and <laughs> make a bunch of money. And he wanted to see, you know, because his dad was on the forefront of all this. So he wanted to come full circle and mm. see where the industry was. So they go to this card show. And they weren't filming, but they cut back on. The cards are strewn about the sidewalk. Apparently, he sat them down, and the sister backed over them with the car. <laughs> and he's, like, yelling at her. He's like, where, 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 watch where you're going. The kids can't hold it for 10 minutes. Like, they had Burger King bags. She took the kids to go to the bathroom or something. So, he's, the box is smashed. So, he's carrying, you know, all these card sets. He's, the and he's, like, just trying to carry them all in his arms. So, he walks into this card show, and it's what you'd expect. It's 15, yeah. you know, card tables of a bunch of old guys thumbing mm-hmm. through stuff. And it made me laugh. He's like, this reminds me of The Wrestler. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, he's like, what's happening? What? Why are these cards not worth anything? So I'm like, did you really not know? Right. You really thought you were going to catch in these 1988 right. Donruses and, and two-minute kids? Yeah, two-minute Google search should have uh, taken yeah. care of that. So yeah. I'm Sounds not sure. Up. But then it becomes, he is so pushy. He's like, well, they're not worth anything. I want to find out why. I want to tell this story. And so the director and the people behind the scenes are like, well, we, you know, we, we should reconnect with your dad and get his point of view. He's like, no, I don't want to reconnect with my long lost father and, you know, Jeez. tie in, you know, childhood wounds and empty. Like, <laughs> it's like, yes, that's obviously what the documentary is about. Oh, it's about God. reconnecting and finding out why his dad left. But yeah. he's like, I think it's more interesting what the baseball cards industry has done. So there's a little bit of like, I think this was manufactured in yeah, some ways. Yeah. I'm not saying it's faked or anything like that, but there were some moments where I thought, I don't think we're getting the full <laughs> the full story of any right. of this. But 
I, if you have any interest in baseball cards, I found it pretty fascinating. They talked to some longtime collectors. Uh, they tried to get people from like Upper Deck to talk to them, and they're like, "Oh, we're not. We don't do interviews." And like, <laughs> there's still some weird like drama in the baseball card world. Yeah. So, yeah, I used to collect them, of course, like everybody else when I was a kid. Oh man, down there and get my piece of gum and some baseball cards. I've still got quite a few out in the garage. I remember my mom buying whole you know boxes yeah. uh you know as an investment <laughs> really paid off um <laughs> <laughs> really paid off yeah. um but yeah we even uh downtown marietta used to have a baseball card shop i used to go to all the time yeah. right on putnam street so. hide orange yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i was a frequent customer Did there Alonzo do some of that alonzo's hide orange where was hide orange in parkersburg hide orange yeah, where was that? I can't picture it. It's um, near where Putnam Commons is now. I think. Yeah, right across the street from there. One of those little... Across from Putnam Commons? Yeah, across the street. Where Kresge's was? That's, yeah, that, same side, yeah. Is that? Yeah. What, it was probably after Kresge's? Yeah, it was after. <laughs> this was like... <laughs> I, mean, I was just like, does anybody else remember yeah. Kreskies? Yeah, this was like where uh, I bought my uh, first eight Star Wars figures <laughs> when Star Wars was out. <laughs> uh, um, well, the, all right, I think the we, last thing oh, I okay. have, all right. we got to we got to mention Working Mom season two hitting. Netflix. I don't know that I'm such a good mom. What is a good mom? Well, I'm not dumping your issues on them to start, or dumping them in the trash. The babies. Not shaking them. Keep them out of pools and fountains and lakes. Okay. Being at home has given me some perspective. Surprise, I brought lunch. Are you drinking at noon? Mm, no. You've been looking a little worse for wear lately. Rude. Stir crazy? Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you insane? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dude, stop. What are you, Rain Man? Get a grip. I went to a job interview. Are you quitting gays? No. <laughs> I was hoping to work at both. Everyone, this is Kate. She's our new creative consultant. They offered me a big job. What? To be like in charge of the people. Frankie, I know you've been sleeping with patients. <sighs> right. I just recently started seeing this girl. Hey. So do I need permission to touch her? Yes. Kiss her? Absolutely. Okay, so I just basically need permission to breathe. Are you breathing on your Working they tune in for? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Catman Reitman. Writer, director, what doesn't she do? Stars in it. Um, Jessalyn Wanlam, Danny Kind, and Juno Rinaldi. Names we should all know. Yeah. I just know it's Maureen Ponderosa from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. There we go. Um, season two hit. Of course, we're, I don't know. I, it kind of hit me this season. I uh, watched it in about a day. That these working moms are pretty privileged on this show. What? They're pretty upper class broads, let are me you tell you. Telling these moms to check their privilege. Well, there's only one there's only one of the main moms in this show that really uh you know, is is down and out, so to speak. Doesn't really she breaks up with her uh her partner and uh, they have a small baby, of course, and and uh <laughs> better than a as, big baby. Yeah. <laughs> Just a small one. <laughs> and she finds herself with no job, no place to live, that type of thing. Um, that's kind of her story arc, getting back on her feet. And then uh, Catherine Reitman, the name, the main character, she... Uh, season one ended with her almost losing her job. Now she's went out and got another job, so she's working two part-time jobs. And I believe um, she's working. She is working. She's working. She's, she, she's but working. she's she's working by choice, not by necessity. Momming, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's kind of cute. They have this mom, mommy group, which is where the characters meet and talk about things. Again, pretty raunchy, pretty <laughs> raunchy guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> but her her best friend is a, uh, a psychologist. We learn more about her story arc and uh history of they've been friends since like college or whatever but she was married previously um and she opens decides to reopen her practice and her ex-husband lit or uh, works right in the office next door they share a wall <clears throat> so of course there's conflict there with um with him 
and uh, he turns out to be a pretty crudy guy. He's a uh, hypnotist psychologist, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's working moms. <laughs> I did That's find the out. Tagline. Nuff said. Nuff said. I did find out it's a Canadian show from one of the networks up there that Netflix has purchased. So season two, which. Netflix kind of fooled me. I thought it was brand new. Turns out it was from last year, and season three has already been shown in Canada. So probably get on there and find some illegal downloads. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Be the first in this. this Yeah, I could cancel my Netflix and still watch Working Moms. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. That's all I got. (laughs) All right, great show! Yay, we did it. That was exciting. Yeah, not too bad. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for following us in all our adventures we appreciate all the listens and any kind of comment you have what you want to hear more about uh you want to if you think i should subscribe to amazon or netflix or who tell me which one to subscribe to yeah tell jordan how to live his life <laughs> right please i got money to burn i don't know what this trade i don't want to baseball card I just, yeah i got i'm yeah i'm cashing those in Catching that early retirement. I don't want to sit here dumbfounded while you guys talk streaming. Yeah. That's right. So So I need something to stream. All right. Thanks. Hit that, hit that patron button. Put some money in there, and then yeah. we'll put it towards we'll Jordan. Straight we solved it. <laughs> put it towards Jordan. That's, that's, that's what we got to do. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. My name is Jordan Little. I'm Cliff Barnes. I'm Seth. Bye forever. Kapow! The Pop Culture Podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Sounds, music, and clips played during the podcast are property of copyright holders. All original content is property of www.udownwithkpp.com.